If you don't already know this about me, I'm a huge fan of the Elixir programming language. Why am I bringing that up? Well, one of my favorite features that's in Elixir and to be fair, other functional programming languages is being proposed for JavaScript. And I wanna talk a bit about this new proposal, why I'm excited about it, and my hopes for what JavaScript could do in the future. The pattern we're here to talk about today is, well, pattern matching. In some ways it's a better switch statement, but it can be so much more. And I wanna show off a bit of why I'm excited about pattern matching in JavaScript. Also, what I think it could be in the future if we bite the bullet and take more of what I love from languages like Elixir. I'm gonna start with some code examples before we go straight to the proposal. Here I have a really common pattern of a function. This one's called greet, takes in a user with an ID and a role. And depending on the condition of that role, I return different greetings. I say, hello, user for users, admin to admins and owner to owners. You could imagine this doing much more complex stuff depending on these roles and other applications. This is very basic. It returns based on the role or it throws an error if there is no role. Your immediate thought is, well, that's way too much code for what it's doing. Why not use a switch statement? It's not that much less code. I also have unnecessary breaks here where I could return in line. Switch is fine though. You pass it a value and you case conditions that that value could exist for. But if you just pass it input, this is now useless. And a common pattern I've seen is switch true. And then on each of these, check if input dot role equals this. And this is a super common pattern in order to do more complex checks in the case. Honestly, I feel like nowadays I see more of that than I see actual traditional switch statements. Because in this case, I'd rather just write the if else's that said, switch is fine. Just as I showed there, it doesn't do enough without weird hacks like switching on true. This is what pattern matching is specifically designed to help us work around. With pattern matching, we have a when clause. Before we go any further, I wanna be very, very clear. None of this is real syntax yet. None of this is approved. So we're gonna see a lot of squiggly lines and weird highlighting in my editor asking you ignore that and just look at the code. So in here we have a match. Match takes whatever you pass it. And then the when clause checks if the things here match the shape of what you put in. So here I'm checking when role is user. So if we look at input and the role key on it matches this pattern of role user, then we call this code. If it doesn't, we check if it matches the next one. And we go through all of these when clauses the same way you would a switch statement to figure out which code should be run. This is super, super handy, but even here, is it that much better than a switch statement? Well, once you have to do a little bit of compute, it immediately becomes much better. Let's take a look at this example where we also have subscribe channels. This is the array of channels you're subscribed to on YouTube. And if the subscribe channels includes my channel, we say hello. Otherwise, we throw an error. Come on, because why aren't you subscribed? It's free. Hit the button. It's right there. Less than half of y'all are subscribed. Come on, guys. Sorry focus on the code. Anyways, when this condition passes with this if here, if subscribe to channels includes this value, then we return this. And if that doesn't pass, then we check the next condition. So if we had somebody who isn't subscribed, but is a user, this condition fails, checks the next one. This one passes because the role is user. So now we get that error. But if the role is something else like admin or owner, those come next. This is so, so powerful. You can do really complex comparisons or just really simple checks in line alongside the code that runs. Making the condition, the behavior and the result very easy to read and parse at once is something I care a lot about. And this helps so much with the readability of these types of complex behaviors. If we take a quick look at the proposal, they have a ton of cool examples around matching responses from a fetch call, around to-do states with weird behaviors that set based on the action that you're passing. This is actually really handy now that I think about it, using a match in order to determine what behavior to run off of an action. Oof, oof, so good. So cool to see what they're working on here. They even have examples of conditional logic at something like JSX, where we return different content based on what we're matching. I hope you're sold. Don't get too excited though, because as it says at the top of this doc, we're only at stage one. This is very early. There are awesome people backing it, including Kat Marchin from Microsoft, as well as Daniel Rosenwasser, one of the leads on TypeScript. So this is looking promising, and I really hope we can push them to make this happen. But I do wanna show off the thing I wish it had that it doesn't, because pattern matching can go much further, especially once you start pattern matching in your function definitions. What the hell am I talking about? I'm gonna show you some code that's gonna look weird at first, and I want you to take a second with me to think it through. This is what I wish we had. You'll notice there's no match or where in here. I just have really strict input types. Input, ID is string, role is user, ID is string, role is admin, ID is string, role is owner. All of these functions have the same name. So how does JavaScript know which one to call? Usually JavaScript just calls the first one. Technically this should be type erroring. And if I was to remove that, we're gonna start seeing the type errors for the overloaded function. What I'm asking you is to imagine a smarter runtime that will actually check all of the existing definitions when you pass a value, match in these definitions, and call the right function based on the content of the values 
values you're calling it with. So if I call this with an object with role admin, it will call this function. If I call it with an object with role user, it will call this function. If I call it with an object with no role or a different role, it falls down to this one and it goes through and checks in order. Can we use the first greet? No. Okay. Can we use the second greet? No. Okay. Can we use the third greet? No. Okay. But what about the type definitions? Sadly, a lot would have to change here, but it would absolutely be possible to automatically generate the role type based on all of the potentials it could be, where you just union the different inputs on these things so that role is a user here, admin here, owner here, or unknown. So the type of role is user or admin or owner or unknown. You can absolutely make this work. It got this would make the amount of indenting necessary, the amount of mental overhead necessary to understand code so much lower. I learned this pattern in Elixir and I can show you an Elixir example here because it got when you have this in your day to day language, it just makes life so much better. And it's really simple and nice to redefine the function three times instead of having to write a giant if statement at the top of the function. The syntactic complexity, the amount of overhead I have to think about in order to, to use this is so much lower. And realistically speaking, the majority of if statements and switch statements that are worth considering pattern matching for, they're happening in the first line of the function. We don't need to do a transform or write code and then switch. The switch being part of the function makes your it just makes your code flow much easier to reason about. And I know this is very functional programming brain to be all in on overloading and anti switch statements. When I think of pattern matching, these are the patterns that I'm thinking of. And while I know overloading is separate from pattern matching, it's when you combine the two that I've had some of my best programming experiences. I really hope we can get to a point in JavaScript where these patterns are possible because I miss it a lot. I don't want to go back to Elixir just because I miss these patterns. So are these patterns exciting to you? Are you going to consider using pattern matching once it's available? And what other features are you excited about for the future of JavaScript? If you want to hear more about the other Elixir feature I was really hyped about, take a look at this video in the corner here all about piping and why I think the pipe operator will be a great addition to TypeScript. That one's also a little bit further along, so you should be excited for it. Thank you guys as always. Really appreciate it. Peace, nerds.